Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. This week's video, I have an update for you. Some variegated stuff, some weird stuff I found that I didn't know I had. How often has that happened on this channel? And I also have something to show you. I want to show you the difference between the new Thai constellation and the older Thai constellation. Hopefully you can see a difference. Just something I want to feature today because I propagated some Thai a long time ago. The Thai I'm calling 1.0. I'll get into it later. And personally, I believe you can see the differences already between the old Thai that was around in about mm, 2018 and the new tie that we have today. So if that sounds like something that interests you, then please keep on watching. Before we start, as cute as this may be, I promise you my hair is the same length on both sides, okay? Obviously it's a bit uneven at the back because that, that's not normal. I don't know why it's doing that. It's never done that. I suspect I've taken too much from one side than the other. I don't know. But if we could try not to be triggered by it, that would be absolutely great. I've also done it because my hair is very dirty, very dirty. But hey, it beats tying your back, right? So, let's get on with it. The first thing I want to whip up on the screen for you really quickly are these guys. Do you remember before Christmas I got these in? I kind of wanted to give you an update on how they're doing. Now, I've picked out this one. Let me just make sure what I'm saying is sort of true to all of them. One moment. Yeah, it kind of is. So, all of these plants that I brought in, I say it all. Disclaimer, I brought about five in some point before Christmas, some point in December. These are, let me get it right, these are a cross between Philodendron L. Choco Red and Philodendron Billetai. You can probably see that by the way that we have Billetai ridges down the front. We have slightly orangey petioles. I wouldn't say that they were 100%, but they're getting there. We have a waxy finish. They're a bit hard shaped, but they're also a bit elongated. And they're very, very, very rigid. Like the petioles on a Billetai, if you didn't know, they're extremely rigid, as are these. So I've had them in. I've done nothing. They're in the original pots that they came in. They've had a water and probably a bit of a feed. I wouldn't doubt it. We have some great growth on them though. If I could just show you them, I'm tipping liquor everywhere. Wouldn't be one of my videos if I didn't. But we've genuinely got some really nice growth on them. I like to try and leave plants alone as much as possible when I bring them in. If they're potted in some kind of media that allows me to do that, for example, if they've come in in tissue and stuff like that, generally I will unpack them. But obviously bare root, I have to do something with them. But if they're in this sort of thing, I can probably keep them as they are. So in the case of a lot of things I have in moss, they stay like this until they're unable to be in there anymore. But we've got some good growth on it, you know. And this new leaf, I actually thought, mm, are they sizing up? Are they not? But this, this, look at this. To me personally, I hope you can see this without focusing on me, this new leaf that is coming in, genuinely, please focus, don't be doing this today. Hopefully you can see that, I'm not sure it's focusing. This looks like quite a large new leaf and I'm quite excited. It could be as big as this one, is this the newest one? No, this is. But to me it looks like it could be slightly bigger and I'm really, really happy about that because I know for a fact if it's been fed, it's been fed with my feed, as of which I keep down here in a big vat. I don't get the sexy stuff that you get online, I get this stuff. By the way, if you want my feed, link is in the description. If you want to know what I'm talking about, do I have one next to me? Oh, I do, I do. I'm actually talking about this stuff when I talk about my feed. Link in the description. Anyway, feed or no feed, they have done really, really well. And I just wanted to basically kind of raise a point because we're coming into spring soon and I know a lot of these hybrids are going to be a little bit more on the market. So I like to tell you how I'm finding them as we go because I don't want you to get things that aren't strong. This isn't a plug for them, by the way. I have literally five. I don't need to plug five of these. So I don't even think I'll be selling these anytime soon, to be honest. Maybe, maybe. We'll see how they go. I don't know if I want to propagate from these or sell them on as they are once they've grown a couple of leaves. I mean, this is extremely sellable right now. I mean, look at the root growth. It's fantastic. But we'll see how they do. I just wanted to let you know they're really, really tough and really nice plants, by the way. I know they're nothing super, super special, but I feel like these days it's just, it's hard to find new shit, guys. It's hard to find new shit. Not that we have to have new shit, but new shit is nice occasionally. So these, so far, if you can't already tell, strong as an ox. Strong as an ox. This next one, I was literally looking for plants to show you today and I just found on a shelf and just look cute. And I, I don't remember doing this, um, but I have here the most cute little bouquet. Look at this, of Syngonium Panda. And I want to give Syngonium a very quick shout out because I do do it often, but maybe not the panda. I feel like I end up doing it with all the Syngonium, like the variegated types and stuff like that. Certainly the variegated Chia Pensi, I kind of shout that out as well. But stuff like this is just as good. It is undecided. It is a bit more chill. But if you want a plant that will just look good and 
not die. This is probably your boy. In here, for those who might be curious, there are actually four plants. So yes, this is nice and sexy and bushy. We love it. Such a vibe. But it is four of them. See if I can show you up there. Sorry guys, I am a bit snivelly today. I don't really know why. You can hopefully see there there's four in the pot. They're doing fine enough. I've got some old shrapnel on the bottom of the pot. Lovely, lovely. But you know me, I don't like to clean things off. I like to just show you them as is. So it is really, really cute. It's grown quite all right, actually. They've grown quite dense. If I separate them out. Oh yeah, they have. That's one right there. And we've got number two, which is very dense, actually. Number three, less dense, but more variegation. And number four, which is probably the least dense of all of them, but it is growing. Very, very cute. Again, so I thought it was cute, so I thought I'd pick it up and show you. So next thing, more of just a little announcement, really. I put this, this exact plant, as it happens, on my Instagram maybe about a week ago, by the time you say this. Um, I just want to tell you that I'm going to be propagating them and releasing a few of them this summer. Not a lot. I say summer, it's probably spring. You get my point. People have been asking what this is, and I only know it to be philodendron SP tropicals, right? Or spa tropicals or whatever. I don't know it as anything else. I'm not sure what it is. I'm trying to grow one out. Unfortunately, I can't show you because I've sort of, I've sort of used one of these shelves as a pole and sort of stuck it to it. So I can't really pick it up and show you, but I'm trying to grow it a bit more mature to see how the leaf shape changes with age. But what I do want to tell you is this is one of the easiest plants I've probably ever grown, propagated, anything. And I would love to know what the actual plant is underneath if it gets officially identified. And I'm serious. You guys probably know if you've been here long enough, you will know the size of the plant I originally bought in. Might have been about this big, so way less than a meter when I bought this in. I have a, I probably have three or four trays of it now. There's three. I think there's another rogue tray somewhere. There's definitely half a tray over there. Call it three and a half trays of this, all with very good variegation, and they're all ready to be cut one more time. So I will be doing that very soon. I just wanted to clear up some stuff because I know people are like, well, why don't you just say what the plant is? And so, well, it's that's it. It's SP Tropicals. I don't I don't know anything else. If you do know, again, let me know in a comment, but just want to let you know how pretty it is. And this is a particularly pretty one, so I thought I'd show you it. It's not the most variegated one I've got by any means. I've got far prettier ones, but just in terms of like the composition of the plant, does that make any sense? I think it's a really pretty plant. So there you go. This variegation can come through with like a pink tinge on it sometimes and then it sort of casts back down. It's really weird. I don't have any to show you because this leaf is just, it's hardened up just enough. So we'll see how it goes. But yeah, going to be propagating these soon. Very, very pretty. And I would like to think at the rate these things grow, what we're in now, February, by May, there should be some coming out. There'll be a dribble coming out, I think. So if you are interested, keep your eye out. Keep your eye out. Right. Next thing, right? I, I don't know where this has come from at all. Like, I don't remember having it. I don't know why I have it. I don't know when I've had it. Obviously, I will have hauled it in for you, so you must have seen it at some point, but I haven't got a clue how long I've even had this. It's obviously come from a tiny stump or it's been weaned off something because I can just tell by how small it is. But this little plant here, it's so small. Let me show you. Look how cute it is. Now, you might be able to see immediately a couple of different plants in there. And you'd be right because it is a hybrid. So this is a hybrid of Anthurium portili. I think that's how you say it. And Anthurium luxurians. I just wanted to show it to you because I found it in a little basket and the coloration on it is really, really nice at the minute. It's very, very pretty. I can certainly see the luxurians in it because of all those sort of abs, dimpling, texture, dimension, whatever you want to call it. And obviously the color and the wide lobes of the portilli. Not that I'm super familiar with what portilli looks like, but to be honest, knowing what I know of luxurians, I can kind of work it out in my head, if you know what I mean, because I have luxurians literally over there that is flowering at the moment, actually. Let me grab it. It doesn't look like the most amazing thing you've ever seen, but it is quite sexy. Hang on one moment. See if I can pick it up without hurting it. But here is my luxuriance here. Not in perfect condition. We'll totally take that. Don't you worry about it. You will not offend me. It's not perfect, but it's decent. That's the actual size of it, just so we know. Um, but we have Unflower, which is right here. Now, I have some webs on there. Please do not worry. They are not spider mites at all. That is a literal, actual web. How wonderful. But on there, henceforth, I have a flower that I'll try and show you up close the best I can. Please focus. It doesn't want to today, does it? There, hopefully it is now. I have a... I keep saying I have a flower. I have seeds coming in. That's what I mean. Sorry, guys. It's Monday morning, and I'm not with it today. But yeah, that's my luxuriance. So from owning that, I can sort of make a guess as to what the portilla looks like. I probably had it in before, honestly. 
I just can't tell you when. So yeah, that, that's kind of how I can work that out. Anyway, after showing you that little, little tiny boy, oh, I'll show you another Anthurium actually. I do have one or two more Anthurium. This is another one. This is really, really cute. I like to remind people this exists every now and again because it's a really nice plant, to be honest. I don't think they're the easiest plant to get, right? Something might have changed since I last said this. So Anthurium lovers, please do not come for me in the comments. But for a long time, Anthurium selby silver was a bit difficult to get. That's all I'm saying. These are absolutely real. They've come from NSA, by the way, so 100% real deal. I've been propagating them for some time. I have a bit of a tray of them coming along, and I probably will get them up again in spring. I'm not really selling anything at the minute, but definitely in spring I shall. But another really, really cute one. They're growing really nice. They respond quite nicely to my feed as well, I've noticed. But then again, all Anthurium do, well, all my Anthurium do, all my Monstera do, and all my Philodendron do. They just get really, really dark. And I hope people that have had the feed have noticed by now the depth of colour that you're actually getting in your Anthuriums, because I notice it all the time. I can actually work out, like, if I've fed something by the colour and how dark my Anthuriums are, because they go hella dark. Can you see this boy, by the way? I hope he's got a really good pride of place in my frame, because he's gorgeous. So, so cute. I have new merch coming, by the way, very soon, and it may or may not feature this guy. Just let me know. Right. Now, this guy, I think he's either, he has either missed a feed or he's just had a tough time because he's not the darkest that he could be at all. And I can't remember if this is just pure um, Anthurium, was it Pterodactyl? Something like that. Um, but do you remember this? Do you remember this that I, I got ages ago? I think Ben got it in. It might have been on that video where Ben just bought random shit in and I had to react to it because I hadn't seen it before. It's probably that. It's probably from that video anyway. And it's honestly, variegation wise, it's looking fine. It's just, I think we can all agree the green colour is not fine. It does have some patches of variegation in places, but even still it could be darker. And I'd probably like to think that'll be quite obvious on camera. But this is the newest leaf. Please focus, honestly. Like, it is gorgeous, don't get me wrong. That is extremely, extremely cute. But you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's not sexy and dark. So I need to give this one a bit of care. I might unpot it at some point and just check the root and make sure nothing's going on in there. There's no root coming through the bottom, but I can see, you ain't gonna see this at all. I can see like, oh, it's tiny, but it's there in the very bottom. I promise, 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 there is a root sort of showing at the bottom. Not sticking through, but sticking across it, if that makes sense. So yeah, he's really cute. I, I think I have more of these. This isn't the plant. I think I've got a couple of cuttings on it, but I don't fucking know where they are. So I want to show you this one because this obviously stands out to me, but it does need a little bit of TLC, I won't lie. It could look a lot better than what it does. Another quick update because I did a little propagation path before Christmas, I do believe. And I wanted to show you how cute these are coming along. They're so cute. So this here is my beautiful variegated gloriosum. It is literally only one of them, guys. I've got a tray. Oh, you won't see it. If I walk to where the tray is here, you probably can't see where I'm waving my hand or where I'm stood. Maybe you can. I've got a tray of them. Then I've got a tray of kind of the same thing, but it's like budding up from like chunks. So that's a very uninteresting tray. But I've got a couple of trays anyway. Dif different variegation obviously but this one is mega mega cute i would argue it's what you want from variegated glorious in this one and look how cute it is if that's not the sweetest little thing then i don't know what is oh honestly hopefully you can see as well the really pretty pink color that's come through doesn't always occur i think that could be temperature related i'm not 100 do not quote me on anything i'm saying to you but Normally, normally they come through, I've said this a lot before, they come through more yellow and then they cast back down to like this creamy white color, right? But at the minute, I have to tell you, if I actually go and look, you won't see what I'm doing. There's just a lot of pink coming through. But if I show you this one here, again, it's going to look scraggly because they had a hard time when they were cut. Like, for example, look at the state of this. But the propagation there is pink. Same thing. Sorry, I'm kicking my camera. Same thing. So maybe it's time of year doing that because the variegation I'm getting through as well, it's not super yellow. I have one or two that are coming through a bit more yellowy. But on the whole, at the moment, they're actually coming through quite pink. And I argue at the moment it's cooler in here. So we're probably at 21 degrees in here. That's low. That's low. To put it in perspective, it can easily be 30 degrees when it gets warm in the summer. No problem at all. And to be honest, some plants start struggling in here because it does get too hot and I can't really cool it down. But it's interesting to me that it's not throwing yellow at the minute. I don't doubt that it won't. But for anyone that didn't know, it tends to come in a creamy, yellowy colour, not full yellow. And then it tends to fade down to what I would class this as, which is like a, it's a creamy white. And then when it gets really old, it tends to turn white. 
really weird, I know. Don't understand it myself. It's really cool. And you know what? It gives the plant a bit of extra edge, so I'm all for it. So at some point, we'll see how this little guy does. If he does really well, I'll have to propagate for like from him again, because obviously this is really good genetics that I want to continue down. Um, so we'll see, but I just want to show you how cute he is. Oh, and the older leaf, if anybody's actually interested, going, what's happened to the older leaf? That's what was on the older leaf. So a quick little lesson in propagation. Always look at the, you obviously the main the merry stem as to what you think might happen with variegation but don't be chucking away minimal stuff because honestly variegation will always be for the most part quite chaotic so while we can sort of predict what's going to happen we can never fully predict what's going to happen because for every one of these i've got with variegation coming off it i've got stuff that is variegation with nothing coming off it you know what i mean so it really depends so don't be throwing things out guys Pro tip, do not be throwing things out. Okay, this next one's cute and I had to do a double take because I thought, I thought I'd grabbed um, Monstera White Monster out of the tray, but I haven't, it's mint. So the tray here, hang on, let me try and actually, is that one? No, yes, this tray here is full of Monstera Mint and Monstera White Monster and they're all cuttings and they're all going at different rates and whatever have you. So I picked this up and the first leaf I saw because they're all clumped together, right, is this one. And as you could probably see, that's very indicative, for example, of a white monster. But it's not. It's not. It's the mint because this is actually the original leaf here that came out. And there we have the actual mint. Now it looks a bit dodgy. Again, it's been propagated from and it's a lot of the energy has been taken from this cutting in order to keep growing. But I just wanted to show you the progression on said plant because obviously we then had this at some point. I might have cut it like this. I can't actually remember. It It would suggest that, to be honest. I think this is the new growth. But the new growth, the new growth is so cute. I can't even look how cute this is. <laughs> look how cute it is. Oh, that is really, really cute. I just had to show you it because I think it's adorable. And it will, I know this looks warm on camera perhaps. Again, it will tone right down to this kind of, you know, minty vibe. It's not going to stay warm. It will cool down. But I'm pleased I'm getting a return on these because I did these also before Christmas. And that's actually had better growth than I, if you ever remember, I think it was it before, did I go somewhere last year? Yeah, I went on holiday. And my, you can't say it, it's just off frame here. My large variegated Monstera, I took cuttings of it. And a lot of those cuttings haven't taken off. Some of them have, some of them haven't. But even then, it's been 10 times slower slower than what these guys have had. So that, I thought that was quite interesting actually because the normal variegated Monstera just haven't, haven't gone as quick. I think this must have been a mint as well. That's taken off. Generally speaking, they're all doing all right. And it is mainly mint in there, I think. Do have some white monster, but not, not as many as I would maybe like. I do still think overall the mint sort of, it just sort of wins over the white monster. I think it's some of it's a size thing because I'm pretty sure mint is small form. Sometimes it's intermediate form. But the white monster is large form. And I do feel like just so many people are just not ready to toy with large form of anything. I think that's why the large form yellow variegated doesn't really take off very much either. The small form does more. And I think it's a space thing because we all want more plants. So if we can get something a bit smaller that grows upwards, maybe that's better than something that literally turns into a tree. And when I say tree, I, I really mean it, trust me. I have experience in this. So what have we got next? Right, the next thing I want to show you, essentially, I'll explain it before I try and hold them up because it's going to get very difficult. But I want to show you, one thing I want to show you is the Monstera, what was it? The, it's not, I mean it is, but it isn't. The Creme Brulee Thai Constellation that I potted up I don't know, a few videos ago, because that's actually done really well, because I fed it on camera, and it's pushing out a leaf that looks, honestly, a decent size. Quite happy with that already. Really happy, because it's just been repotted. Doesn't always happen. But I also want to show you that compared to some really tatty cuttings of a Monstera Thai Constellation 1.0. Right, what do I mean? I got some shit for this, and let me just explain myself, right? Let me just rewind one second, and I shall explain myself. So... Okay, when I say Monstera Thai Constellation 1.0, I'm not trying to come up with a new thing that never existed before and make some money off it, right? One, I haven't even sold them. Two, I probably have five to my name. Three, it was literally a term I used to differentiate something from something else. 
So all I meant was an earlier version of the Thai constellation. And trust me, guys, I was here long enough. I've seen the difference firsthand from looking at literally hundreds of Thai. And I know if you've been with me long enough on this channel, you all know that, hundreds of Thai. So what I found was, or what I think is, I should say, just to make sure we're all correct on this, I firmly believe that Monstera Thai constellation pre-2019, so a lot of you might not even have one, a lot of you might not have even wanted one back then. I barely knew about them back then when I got mine. I think I got mine in very late 2018. It's on my channel. You can see it by going way back, okay? The difference between those ones and the new ones I think is quite a bit, both in a visual sense and in a hardiness sense. So the visual sense, and I'm going to do my best to show you, and it's not going to be that obvious, but maybe it will. I don't know. The visual sense, Thai 1.0 is just my name for them. Don't go looking for it. Not a thing, me saying it. The Thai 1.0, when we, when we think about it, when we look at it, the ratio of the leaves to the petioles is a good ratio, right? So the petioles aren't too long and you've got some decent leaf, right? Conversely, the Thai, we'll call them 2.0, so post 2019, it's different. The leaves are smaller and the petioles are longer. Not as sexy right? Not as sexy. No one wants long petioles, smaller leaves. We want it the other way around, right? So that's something I've noticed. The second thing I've noticed is the difference in not care, but hardiness. So I firmly believe that the original tie, the 1.0, honestly, they'll grow out of concrete. They are absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Tie 2.0, I find that they rot much easier. They don't grow so well. Taking cuttings from them, it's, just, it's not a fun process. It's a slower process. It, it, there's just a big difference for me personally. Now, I've got the same shit when I went and said that I thought there was an intermediate form of Monstera that wasn't small and wasn't large. And I think I've said this in 2020, 2021. I got a lot of shit for that. But I think since then, people are acknowledging that there is actually a middle form. Just saying, just saying, I said it years ago. Anyway, point made, I'm going to lift them up. I'm going to do my best to show you what I mean. But bear in mind, these cuttings of this original tie, scraggly, doesn't come close. Okay, like it really don't. Right, I'm going to bring for you now the scraggliest, nastiest Thai 1.0 cuttings. I will explain the backstory on this mess. So the nasty old leaves that you are seeing here, three of which there are, genuinely, okay? They're all crinkly, they're nasty, it's not a vibe, get it? This is based off, funny enough, it's actually Ben's really old Monstera Thai constellation, right? And I took cuttings from it here and there. I think it's been on a video ages ago when I was in my old flat. I think I took a big cutting of it then, and I did it for a video or whatever have you. So it's actually pieces of that. Pieces of that that were just fried up, neglected, just generally shit, right? Barely any water, no feed at all, nothing, okay? I think I cut them and put them into this. I don't think they were maybe quite as crispy, I can't remember. I'm not really sure. But I put them into this for a video I think I did, probably on, uh, it was likely the Monstera Alba versus Thai or something in 2020, whatever it was, right? 2023, I don't know. So I did that. Then I left it. I put it together with some other shit. I left it in a big pot. It's not been watered very often, and this is God's honest truth, it's really not. And I might have been fed once, maybe twice in the last year. Like, we're not talking feed, because I know where it sits in the shop. It sits in basically neglect alley, and it doesn't get anything. But I want to show you, therefore, the, not the rate of growth, because obviously the, the growth that I'm going to show you now, there isn't a ton of it. It's more about what it actually looks like, okay? So in general, personally, I I think that these ratios here, maybe that one doesn't, granted, I think that these ratios of petiole to leaf are better. I really do think they're better. Now, feed obviously helps. It obviously helps. I'm not saying it doesn't. I'm not an idiot. But I personally think that in general, this kind of ratio of this leaf right here, just take this one leaf. So it really is that tall. And then the leaf at the moment, it's still hardening off, by the way, so it could get even bigger. But that ratio is a really decent ratio, right? And again, not saying every single one is like that. I've got a lovely little one coming through at the bottom. That's definitely a good ratio as well. Well, I've got a few, right? I think generally they are a lot more stout and fat, right? Okay. I'm then going to very quickly pick up the one that I propagated, what, a couple of weeks ago? I don't actually know when it was. Two, three weeks ago. I don't know. I'm going to pick that up for you and I want you to see, hopefully you can see the difference straight away. If you can't, that's okay. I'll try again when the other ones sort of get bigger and stuff and I can separate them out and it'll be better. I hope you can see the difference here. 
I really do. So this is definitely a Thai 2.0 because it was it's a creme brulee. So this is all the bullshit stuff that the Thailand are just making up to sell more, basically. And I bought it because I had to see if there's anything in it. There isn't. This is no more Thai than anything else is. All right, it's not. It was sold to me as a creme brulee, meaning I do believe that it's supposed to have a lot more variegation and everything else. And don't get me wrong, when it was small, yes, it was. But that's just down to pot luck of how many nice variegated leaves you have when it's, you know, a big plug sat in about a thousand other plugs that don't have as much, okay? Always bear that in mind when you buy shit like that, okay? And this is the point. But it's actually not the point of what we're talking about right now. My point is here, look at the difference. Look at the difference and how leggy this is. Okay, for me personally, that's a huge difference. This has had more care. This has been sat in my like high value trays and shit like that under proper lights. This, the other tie, hasn't. It's been sat in a dark corner. Now I know Monsera don't like as much light, but come on now. You see what I'm saying? I grow other Monsera just fine in here. I grow large form. That's I think that's intermediate actually, but I grow other forms in here just fine under the same lights. It's it's just not that. I want to show you what I think the difference is. Like even when it gets to here, we, we don't have a great ratio by the time we get here it's really shit now i've started feeding it obviously i repotted it when it was at this point and i personally believe at the moment we've got a better result coming out here this is what i meant before personally i think that could be a better ratio but on the whole i think it's worse do you see what i'm saying honestly guys i'm not gonna be offended if you disagree whatsoever really not but i think there's a difference because this has had like no love at all like literally thrived on neglect and look at the state of it and look at this one that's had it all you know i think there's a difference now does it really matter what i think no because most people can't even get these anymore so who really cares this is just something that i feel like i just want to share with you and it's just something i've found out i hope that isn't making a noise on my mic i will keep you updated on this guy specifically because obviously i'm chugging it the minute to be honest with my feed i'm actually gonna see what happens if i just literally butt chug it with feed and see if i can change this ratio that we actually have because i'm very very curious it is satin pawn full disclosure there is technically a bit of slow release in there but i think it's so spent guys i've had this pond for years and that's not pond i didn't actually grab the pond it's right there on my nail you're not gonna be able to see that at all are you you're gonna focus on it please there tiny bit of slow release it's probably not active anymore i'm just gonna go out on a limb and assume that the water it is sat in with my feet in it is probably more active so i'm not saying it's scientific or anything it's literally just like an ad hoc experiment but i'm hoping that this does well and if it does i'd be quite happy because it means my feed's doing what I wanted it to do. So normally when you repot things, as you may know, sometimes, sometimes, if the plant was deeply unhappy where it was, you repot it and it gets a growth spurt. Totally accept that. A lot of the time though, you repot things and it doesn't. It sort of stunts it for a little while because it's had root disturbance, right? Not the case with this because my feed is supposed to have stuff to boost the roots and everything else and reduce transit shock or transit stress of repotting plants so if that works which it does seem to be i'm extremely happy about that extremely happy about that but i will keep you updated on that because i just want to see if i can change the ratio hey if i can't i can't i'll tell you promise you i promise you i'll tell you um just remind me to actually show you again because i may forget but at the moment that looks good to me because the leaf size looks all right but obviously this is going to keep growing so it might still look a bit long and leggy it might i mean these have done this is not it's not what you want is it really so let me know what you think about anything i've said there and obviously you honestly you are totally welcome to disagree this, none of this is scientific this is just something i've personally noticed and i can't remember what you guys said when i originally brought this up i actually can't remember i think a lot of people tended to agree um but there'll always be someone that does not agree and that's absolutely fine it is the internet after all and with that guys thank you very much for watching this video today i hope you enjoyed my little updates for you uh if you have any requests please leave them in the description so about that about that i really want to do a wish list video for this year right don't get excited don't get excited but it's not very long at the moment there's probably six or seven plants on it what i might do is i was gonna sort of hold off until i'd found more to put on it but it's kind of reached a standstill because obviously i've seen most plants right totally fine so what i might do is i might make the wish list and it will be short i will put it out for you and then if i find like five or six more throughout the year i'll just do another wish list video i don't think we need to limit it to like one a year for example 
okay? So I might do that. Let me know what you think about me doing that. Personally, I think it's a great idea. It might just mean the video's a bit shorter and you don't see, obviously, a plethora of amazing plants. Either that or I start putting on it some plants that are more common or more regular that I would like to own, that I don't own. I can also do that as well. At the minute, I've kept it to like rare plants and stuff like that. So let me know what you prefer there. So we can either do smaller videos of just the rare shit or I can do a bigger video and put in a, basically a broader spectrum of plants so let me know anyway thank you very much for watching merch is down below feed is down below everything you probably need is down below if you like this video please leave a like down below again down below can we stop saying down below and if you haven't already subscribed i would love it if you could do so thank you very much for your time today i hope you have a great weekend i will love you and leave you and i'll see you next week bye guys